I'm reminded as I've been reflecting on the stories of Jesus' death and resurrection during this Lent season, that there is a very key moment in the narrative of Jesus' arrest and then trial concerning one of his followers who must, I think, have for years afterwards lived with a sense of failure, of letting down the person who was most important to him. The story is a famous one. It's that of Peter who is told in advance by Jesus that he is going to deny him, deny even knowing him. And Jesus talks about the cock crowing. Uh, and at that moment, Peter will realise what he's done. And sure enough, we then get a detailed account of Peter following Jesus as Jesus is taken by the soldiers into the high priest's court to be tried. And as the people mill around in the courtyards, uh, various people then say to Peter, you are one of his followers. And Peter denies it. The end of the account in Matthew's Gospel has the cock crowing, Peter realising what he's done, and was simply told that he wept bitterly. I can recognise something of that feeling of disappointment, of having let somebody down, of even feeling like a failure. I think many of us can from this past year, as so many of the things that gave us purpose and meaning in life seem to have been stripped away. And yet, of course, that's not the end of the story for Peter. We don't know how long he lived with that sense of failure, of letting someone down. But what we do know is that in John's Gospel, we get the story that after Jesus' resurrection, he quite deliberately, it would appear, seeks out Peter and has a deeply personal conversation with him in which he effectively commissions him to care for his sheep, his followers. It's a lovely sense, I've always thought, of Jesus recognising Peter's sense of failure and of wanting to reaffirm him and recommission him for his work. So if you, like me, have found yourself wondering about how you've let people down or whether you've been a failure during this time, then I hope you will draw comfort from knowing that Jesus seeks out those in that position and wants to commission them afresh to work with him to bring comfort and healing to others. So my prayer for you, whatever your circumstances, whatever your feelings at this time, is that you will know that Jesus is not only with you and loves you, but indeed commissions you for a new work of caring for others, of loving them, and of helping them to understand more of God's purposes for their lives. Good morning and welcome to our Palm Sunday service. My name is Richard Chithui, I'm the rector and I'm going to be leading this service. Sharon Andrews, our curate, is going to be preaching. Our aim in this service is to help 
us all to draw close to God, to learn from him again as we enter Holy Week. But we're also here outside of these services to offer support and help and encouragement. So particularly if you're here visiting or new uh, to these services, you're very welcome to contact us at any time to, to talk about anything uh, or just to ask questions. One of the things that we've been doing throughout Lent and just before is running some online courses, uh, an alpha course to find out more about the Christian faith uh, and the well-being journey to reflect on our own, well, how we're doing. Both of those are coming to an end this week and we're looking at what we're going to be running after Easter. And so if you think one of those might be helpful for you or something else entirely, uh, then please do contact me. But for this service, we come to the end of the series that we've been looking at during Lent of worshipping in the wilderness, journeying with Jesus through that desert place. We've learned many things and our final lesson, if you like, this morning is that the wilderness can be a place of surprises. So let's pray together as we begin. We welcome you, King Jesus, humble King, King of our lives, with shouts of Hosanna, for you are the God who saves. We fix our eyes on you, King Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, our hope of a wilderness restored. Amen.
God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's show our love for him by confessing and acknowledging our sins with sorrow and penitence, but with faith. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. On our communities, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. Normally at this time of year, we hand out palm crosses. Many of you will have received palm crosses in the packs that we sent out a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't, uh, and if you would like to make yourself a cross, here's a little video that actually we made this time last year to show you how you can make one out of things that you have at home with you. So what you need is a strip of paper. I have some lovely brown some pretty paper or you could use just plain paper um, and you can even colour in the plain paper or stick some stickers on it. So I'm going to start with my brown piece so obviously the bigger the piece the bigger the cross and we start by folding it in half just so that we know where the middle is and then we use that as a guide and we just fold it over so you get a triangle so it's folded across like that. We then take one piece and fold it behind and then fold it over again so you end up with a square like so. So whichever piece you haven't just folded over you take behind and you should be able to pass it through the hole so that it locks it in place. the long bit of the cross and then you take your other piece and mm -hmm. you fold it and you pass it through the hole in the mm -hmm. middle mm -hmm. whichever way it will go through like so and then mm -hmm. you fold that piece back through the loop the back there we go so you should end up with a palm cross like so and so with cross in hand however we may have got it we pray god our savior whose son jesus christ entered jerusalem as messiah to suffer and to die let these crosses be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And so let's say together our psalm, words from Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, 
his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Open to me the gate of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now before our reading from Matthew 21, a reflection from Isaiah. Our reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. 
untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. The theme of today's journey through the wilderness is surprise. A surprise is something unexpected, can be good, can be bad, doesn't always go to plan. Maybe you've organised one or been part of one. I had a birthday full of surprises quite some time ago. It was my 25th birthday. I was surprised that I had received very few greetings or cards or gifts during the day and the evening didn't promise to be any more exciting. Our church home group was going to help decorate a friend's bathroom. <sighs> I was slightly surprised that my husband, John, had agreed to this because it was my birthday after all. We had invited someone to tea but John was behaving strangely. He decided to iron the tablecloth while we were still eating and the meal was rather unexciting and small for a special birthday. I thought. After tea I was sent off dutifully in my decorating gear, paint smeared and dirty, to strip wallpaper next door, while John settled the baby and did the washing up. I was surprised and secretly slightly annoyed that no one else joined us in stripping the wallpaper for some time. I had just settled into the task when the phone rang. Could I nip home? The baby was crying. I went rather grumpily through the alley to our house. I couldn't hear her at all. And then, surprise! Lots of friends and food, and wine, and celebration. It was a party for me, for my big birthday. And there I was, covered in paint and wallpaper strippings. Today's reading includes some interesting and different surprises. But this event was promised and prepared for, for a long, long time longer than my 25th birthday party. This event was centuries in the making, but still a surprise. When Matthew wrote his story of Jesus, he makes it clear that Jesus knew what was going to happen and had made arrangements for it. 
there was going to be a triumphal procession into Jerusalem. Her king was coming at last. The host was Almighty God. The invitation list was huge. The pre-event advertising was global. The book of Isaiah says this. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see, your salvation comes. Your reward is with him and his recompense is before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. You shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Unlike my surprise party, it wasn't the guest of honour who was clueless. It was the guests. God is telling the world. A saviour is coming to save his people. He is seeking them out. They are known, they are lost, they're sought out and they're saved. Like mislaid guests who don't know that they're expected, let alone what they're celebrating. You're lost and you don't know that help is coming. But a saviour is on the way. Surprise! Join the party. The quotation that Matthew uses in today's reading is very like the one from Isaiah. It's from Zechariah, another Old Testament prophet. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Jerusalem. Shout aloud, O daughter Zion. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. A king is coming, your king is coming, our king is coming. What does this king look like? Triumphant, yes. Victorious, yes. Humble. What? That was a surprise. The triumphs that the Romans took part in and set up around their empire were to celebrate particular kinds of victory. Victory over people and races, over their lands, over their wealth, over rebellions. Slaves and defeated leaders were paraded in chains. The loot and treasures that they had stolen were displayed. Everything carefully choreographed and programmed to make sure the glory went to the winner. The victor, usually a military general, arrived to cheers and acclaim from the cloud crowd, magnificently dressed on a magnificent horse or pulled by a chariot, wreathed with laurels. But the triumphs and victories of Jesus are over sickness, over sorrow, over separation from God and one another, over emptiness, enslavement and oppression. His triumphs were for others and for the glory of God the Father. The kingdom Jesus was announcing is a foretaste of heaven and it is defined by humility. And that was surprising. No one was forced to join in his victory procession. No one was paraded in chains like a slave. It was free and spontaneous, full of song and movement, like a surprise party. And the city came out to join in. What a glorious day. Palm Sunday brings a change of tone to Lent. 
We've thought about sorrow and sacrifice, about passion and fasting and repentance. And then, suddenly, here's a day to celebrate together our humble King. I don't know about you, but after long months of being largely alone, untouched and distanced, stretches of time that felt they would never end, I've got to feeling safe and secure at home, with only little trips out to break the monotony, the supermarket, the DIY store. I feel stuck, unwilling to get up and about. I don't even think about how life is going to be different soon. I think we've all got used to spending our special days decorating and stripping wallpaper rather than partying. Palm Sunday with its crowds, noise and shouting, clamour and turmoil feels a bit energetic for me now. And so let's pray that today, as we join the disciples and the crowds lining the path, that we feel again the fervour and the thanksgiving that got a weary people on its feet and out of the city walls. To lift our hearts and cry Hosanna to our triumphant, our victorious, our humble Saviour. To press forward to get a good view, to lay down our coats to smooth his path. To long to be together again, to praise and bless our surprising Lord and King. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our God of surprises. Amen.
Let's say together. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our saviour and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We offer our prayers to God in the name of Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. This Palm Sunday, we remember Jesus entering Jerusalem. And so we pray for our own cities and places of belonging. We pray for those who live here, be they in comfort or in need. We pray for those who come to our area and our cities for study and for work or to serve. And we pray for those whose decisions and examples shape our common life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember as Jesus came, he subverted the expectations of the crowd. And so we pray for our society and for our world. We pray for those who are intrigued or baffled by Jesus. We pray for those who are challenged or angered by the gospel and by grace. We pray for those who cannot see Jesus or hear the gospel because the church gets in the way. And we pray for all who are seeking to follow the way of discipleship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the story of Jesus may continue to find its way into hearts and minds and so renew lives and transform communities. We pray for those who will visit churchyards and stations of the cross and church buildings even from the outside this coming week. We pray that they may be encouraged, challenged, prompted, but we pray that they would meet Christ and they would leave refreshed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves. We pray for strength and encouragement. We pray that we may, may exalt Jesus, give him the name above every name. And we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Thy kingdom come in the lives of your people. Thy kingdom come in the worship and witness of your church. 
thy kingdom come in and for the whole of your creation. May thy kingdom come in our families, our connections, our friends, the places where we meet and the places where we sit alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. As with everything over the last year, uh, this Holy Week is affected by lockdown restrictions. So our first on-site services are on Easter morning itself as we celebrate at the beginning of the day uh, Christ's resurrection. You are welcome to come. It will be a pleasure to see you there to, to celebrate, to share together. But I would ask you if you're able to please book your place online on the website. The, the link is on the page now and you can find it in the news sheet and other things circulated over the last couple of days. Uh, let's just say that we know how many people are there and just make sure that we're not uh, over uh, the capacity that we can manage. But even though we may not be holding so many services and events, it is still possible to come to the church this week 
and to take part in some reflection and prayer. So in the churchyard, you will find a Stations of the Cross Trail. Now, this has been set up with 14 stations drawn from the Bible, 14 stages that Jesus went through on his journey to the cross and to death. At each station, you'll find a picture or an object to reflect on, to think about. You'll find some words from scripture to read as well. And if you've got a smartphone, you can scan the QR code, which is on that poster, and listen to a reflection which John Woolmer has recorded for each of those stations. If you can't get down to the churchyard, well, you can still go to the website and listen to John's reflections there as well. This Monday, Thursday, we have a Zoom service. Uh, details have been in the new sheet circulated. And on Good Friday, uh, both in the afternoon from 2 till 3, we'll have an online stream service of reflection and meditation and prayer at the foot of the cross. And then in the evening at 6 o'clock, I'd invite you to join Leicester Show at the Cross, which is also streamed online. Uh, and the, the event which normally happened each year in the centre of Leicester, many churches and people contributing to that dramatic uh, representation of the journey of Christ. Uh, this year is happening online, so please do uh, take part in that. But as we finish this service, uh, let's pray together. Jesus, we have walked with you this far. May we not abandon you in this holy week, but stay by your side through your sorrow, that we might also join you for your resurrection morning. Surprise us on this journey, as we fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.